Frost is very dangerous because it roughs up the surface. The wing is not going to perform even remotely close to how it is designed to perform. That's the 991. You're going to see uh, traffic overtaking you about three miles off your right, Airbus 320, climbing out of 7,300. Just don't want you to get scared. Oop, there was a stall horn. Airspeed, airspeed. We are on the leeward side of Thank these mountains. Man. I'd rather get closer to the windward side of those mountains. Uh, I'd just go ahead and take it off autopilot. We should hand fly it through here. Low level wind shear advisory is in effect. Advise on initial contact. You have information uniform. I'm Josh, a pilot and flight instructor with a passion for the sky, sharing it with those around me and using it to see the world from a new perspective. Flying can seem super complex, but I've made it my mission to showcase safe practices while enjoying the beauty this world has to offer. Subscribe to Climb Into the Cockpit on future adventures. This is Aviation 101. Addison Ground, clear to Hotel Yankee India Airport, via on departure flight, runway heading six back, radar vector, show four, niner departure. In the previous episode, Chelsea and I left Texas and the sunrise behind us as we began the trip to California in 80991. We covered the basics of flight planning and choosing fuel stops on a multi-leg cross country like this, and some other issues forced us to implement the three strike rule and scrub the next day of flying. A lot of good topics were discussed in that video with some absolutely gorgeous views too, so definitely give it a watch if you haven't seen it yet. That leads us to the here and now. We're in Chandler, Arizona, ready to continue the trip after a day of waiting on the ground for a winter system to pass. But winter weather plus parking the plane under the stars introduces its own complications. So I was wondering if we were gonna have some frost this morning and it turned out to be true. So two things need to happen. The collecting surface has to be at or below the ambient air temperature's dew point and that dew point has to be below freezing, so obviously both. I actually need to stop myself right here because what I just said is true, but there are also instances where it may not be true. The first condition I listed is always true. In order for frost to be present, the collecting surface must not only be below the ambient air's dew point that creates dew, but it must also be below freezing in order for that dew to freeze. That's frost. The second condition I listed is not necessarily true. I said the ambient dew point must be below freezing. That's false. Frost can show up even if your ambient temps never got down to freezing. Metal is a great thermal conductor, so ambient temperature gets easily diffused into the bulk of the metal material, making the surface a lower temperature than the ambient air. This is why metal normally feels colder to the touch, also why it feels super hot to the touch if it's been baking in the sun. It's an excellent thermal conductor. So, two conditions must be present to form frost. One, the collecting surface temperature must be below the ambient dew point. That will form dew. And two, the collecting surface temp must also be below freezing. That will freeze the dew, creating frost. Through here, and we have frost on the wings. The front of the wings are thawing out. They are just wet at this point, not frozen. And the tail here did have some frost on it, but now it's just standing water. So. We've got a little bit of waiting to do. That's That was kind of built into my thoughts this morning for our time buffer. Frost is very dangerous because it roughs up the surface and it breaks up the airflow that's going up and over the wings with the differential between the high and low pressure. That's what creates lift. But with frost on the wings, it disrupts that airflow and that makes it actually pretty, uh, pretty dangerous for flight. The wing is not going to perform even remotely close to how it is designed to perform. So we cannot take off with any frost on the airplane. So we're gonna have to wait for that to melt off, but I would like to be wheels up in about an hour and a half, uh, which is plenty of time for the ice to melt off. One thing we could do, given that the sun is over there and the airplane is pointed toward the sun, we can drop the tail and just spin it around real quick and let the sun start beating down on the backside of the wings and that will probably get it to melt a little bit faster. But we'll see if we even need to do that. We'll see how fast this stuff melts. Chapter five in the pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge is all about aerodynamic principles. And page 5-26 describes how ice, snow, and frost accumulation hurts the airplane's performance. Chapter 12 is all about weather theory. And it goes into detail about the relationship between temperature and dew point and how that leads to these hazards. It even says, quote, aircraft that have ice, snow, or frost on their surfaces must be carefully cleaned prior to beginning a flight because of the possible airflow disruption and loss of lift. Links are down in the description to the hard copy of this handbook on Amazon or to the free PDF version on the FAA's website. 
Even as a flight instructor, I love going back and reading these handbooks. There's always yet another piece of information that jumps out and helps my understanding and whatever I'm looking up. All right, that does say noise abatement procedures avoid flying over housing and don't make any turns prior to the canal. So I'll look for the canal. Chandler Tower, Skyhawk 80991 or one holding short of runway 22 right, ready for westbound VFR departure. That's not 80991, your right turn westbound is approved, runway 22 right, clear for takeoff. Right turn to the west approved, runway 22 right, clear for takeoff, 80991. Confirming 22. Takeoff power is set, making rated. There's 50. Chandler Tower, crew track 653, 10 miles to the north, uh, just departing Falcon, uh, requesting touch and go. Crew track 653, Chandler Tower, make sure it in from way 22 right. Alright, we are crossing the canal now. That's 991, frequency change approved. 991, good day. I'm gonna give him a cold call here. Yep. Phoenix departure, Skyhawk, November 8-0-9-9-1, off Chandler with a VFR request. Track 0991 Phoenix approach, Phoenix altimeter 3016, same request. 3016, we just departed Chandler, Arizona, we're VFR out to Van Nuys, California. Victor, November, Yankee, 8500 requested. Memory 0991, squawk 2603. 2603, 80991. 0991, ready to four miles west, northwest Chandler Airport, say altitude and route of flight. We just crossed 3,400 in the climb up to, actually we're crossing 3,500 now. Route of flight is uh, pretty much direct Van Nuys. We're just going to stay underneath the Bravo here. Major 991, Roger. That exchange with Phoenix Approach was a textbook flight following request, but it was not permission to enter the Bravo airspace. The Bravo is different than all other airspace associated with an airport. In order to enter it while flying VFR, we must hear the controller say to us with our call sign, the words cleared into the Bravo airspace. Without hearing those words, we are not allowed to touch the Bravo. The controller didn't clear us in, so we'll stay under it for now. Little nuances about radio communications like this can seem complicated to learn and keep track of, but one of my sponsors, Plain English, is changing that. They've developed an app called RSIM, or Aviation Radio Simulator. You can practice your radio skills in a much more relaxed environment so that when you actually do get in the airplane, you've got that part down and you can focus on the flying. For me, radio work is the first skill that tarnishes if I haven't flown in a while, but plain English has solved that problem. You can use code AVIATION101 for 10% off when you sign up for the app and start polishing your radio skills whenever you want. In uh, November 991, would you like a Bravo clearance? Yeah, we could continue to climb if we did get a Bravo clearance. We just wanted to stay out of y'all's way in case y'all uh, weren't able to accommodate. 991, clear through Bravo airspace, resume O navigation and appropriate vehicle altitude. All right, resume O navigation and we'll start the climb. 8991, appreciate it. Cleared into the Phoenix Bravo. Thank you. That's the 991. You're going to see uh, traffic overtaking you about three miles off your right, Airbus 320, climbing out of 7,300. Just don't want you to get scared. All right, we're looking for the traffic gate. Zero nine nine one. <laughs> Just didn't want him to scare you. <laughs> we got the Airbus inside. Eight zero nine nine one. Zero nine nine one. Thank you. It's great. Oh, so it's thirty one ninety five. It's been mostly smooth, but I believe that's related to technique. Yeah, thirty one ninety five. <laughs> of course it is. I am awed by your greatness today. <laughs> Contact Albuquerque Center one three two point nine. Have a fantastic. I like this flight. frequency. All right, thank you. Thirty two. Uh, 95, Southwest, uh, 3195. 32 nine. have a great day. 32 nine. thank you. Okay, Air Shell 6332, how's your ride? Smooth so, so far, 6332. Air Shell 6332, I appreciate the report. Connect Albuquerque Center, 125.4, have a great day. 25-4, Air Shell 6332, you too. <laughs> In Cessna 991, I did ask everybody else, I am kind of curious all level, how is your ride? Super smooth, right here at 85. Sounds good. I have my coffee. And number 991, if you need hire, just let me know. I'll give you pretty much whatever you need today. Roger that. We'll let you know. Uh, we've only got an 8-knot headwind here, so I think we'll cut our losses and probably stay here for a while. 8 knots is not bad. <laughs> Look, I'll approach Good afternoon. We'll park back with you, 10,000. We have Oscar and a pound. This is squeezing my head together. We'll approach the circle of all three, if not, visual flying. <laughs> I was not expecting United 1294, traffic 125, one mile west down, 172, 8,500. On a four and a half hour flight on a fair weather day like this, the cruise phase is super relaxed. 
usually consumed by chatting about whatever comes to mind, the periodical snack time, trying to make each other crack up. On a long, clear, and straight leg over the desert like this, getting a frequency handoff is enough to break the boredom. However, an invisible force of nature is about to make us a lot more busy. So that's the Banning Pass out there. Known for hellaciously high winds through there. There's actually a bunch of wind turbines because there's a lot of wind to take advantage of in there. And you can see it right through. exactly. It's like a venturi feeds up the air. It's lower pressure. But we are pointing this direction. But we are actually going to be cutting just the left of the mountain right out there, which behind that is Big Bear, California. But we can expect some high winds, and we'll look alive for mountain wave and be ready to bail out. And they'll seven five nine go in the tower to the lower valley. To the, the banning, contact, uh, to banning. Yeah. Winds 340 at 42. Jeez. Airspeed, airspeed. God dang. Full throttle, nose pitched way up to climb, and we're losing altitude. We're in a severe downdraft caused by mountain wave. Mountain wave is just what it sounds like. As high velocity winds up at altitude flow up and over rugged terrain, the air conforms to it like an airfoil. Imagine water flowing through a river up and over rocks. The water climbs up the front side of the rock and then flows down and tumbles behind the rock. Air does the same thing over hills and mountains. The air climbs up the windward side of the mountain and flows back down on the leeward side of the mountain. Depending on the speed of the wind and how extreme the terrain is, these mountain waves can extend way up into the flight levels and for 100 miles or more away from the actual terrain. In our case, we're on the leeward side of these mountains. Thus, we're flying through the descending air, and severe downdrafts are dangerous in any type of aircraft if you're not ready for them. Check out Chapter 12 in the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge for more on mountain wave and weather theory. Link to that handbook is in the description. Given that we're under clear skies and up high, we left the autopilot on to watch Garmin's envelope protection in action. It will not let this airplane get below 60 knots, and if it reaches that 60 knot envelope limit, it will gently lower the nose to prevent a stall at the expense of altitude, and it will promptly announce airspeed, airspeed, to alert the pilot that the autopilot can no longer hold altitude within the speed envelope, and the pilot should take corrective action. But what would be good corrective action in this case? We can't climb. We're flying through a descending mass of air that the vertical climb performance of this little Skyhawk can't compete with. Priority number one is to prevent a stall. The autopilot is doing what our hands should be doing if we didn't have an autopilot. Lower the nose. Once a stall is prevented and you have control of the airplane with sufficient airspeed, I would pitch for either VX or VY to minimize your altitude loss. Apply full power if you haven't already and turn toward lower terrain. Aim for a big valley, the lower desert or wherever will buy you more altitude above the terrain beneath you. Now, I want you to imagine the same scenario, but you're flying in the dark. You can't see the mountains, and you can't see beneath you. Or what if you're in a little airplane like this cruising in IMC with only the 2,000 feet of required terrain clearance? In that case, you have next to no options if a downdraft is forcing you to lose 2,000 feet like we did here. Pick your battles wisely, be conservative in your judgment, and don't fly yourself into a corner. Wait for good weather, wait for daylight, wait for more options. Your family wants you to come home alive. Look out, Centurion 4840, Kilo is 12.5 for John Wayne. Centurion 4840, Kilo is 12.5 for John Wayne. Centurion 4840, Kilo is 12.5 for John Wayne. The lowest terrain to cross to get into the LA Basin from this direction is the Banning Pass. Known for its high winds, we picked our course line carefully. Knowing that the wind will basically be cutting across the valley from right to left, we're going to hug the left side to increase our chances of catching the updrafts of the mountain wave, and keep our distance from the leeward side of the valley that would yield severe downdrafts like we just experienced. Except this time, we'll be much closer to the terrain with fewer options to escape. So Cal, November 87, Mr. Mike is with you off thermal VFR, climbing out of 2,900 now to 7,500 VFR. November 7, Mr. Mike, contact Los Angeles Center, 128.15. 2815, Mr. Mike. Alright, I think we're pretty okay on the risk of major downdrafts. In 
currently at 1,800. And then now you can hit nav. Path. Understand, sir. We'll stay here at 9,000. No problem. And now an armed GPS, so it's going to fly this heading until it intercepts our course. Oh. And then. November one, Romeo Mike, maintain out of below on that line to Van Nuys. Five one, Mike, out of below five thousand. And the wind is picking back up from its original direction again. Now that we're out from behind that monstrous mountain range. Airport side, let's get ten forty-four. Ten forty-four cleared. Visual approach runway one three right. Clear to the visual approach one three right. Alaska ten forty-four. SoCal approach Skyhawk eight zero nine or nine or one eight thousand five hundred via part of Van Nuys. For eight zero nine or nine or one SoCal approach, expect light to moderate turbulence in the area. The interior altimeter is three zero two two. 3022 will expect it, 9901. Attention on craft, on chair information, Alpha Security, and same for the information, Oscar. The rest of the cruise phase was straightforward, literally. We were above all the airspaces for all the SoCal airports, and we did stay clear of the SoCal Class Bravo airspace since we never got a clearance. But with our route, we really didn't need one anyway, so we sacrificed a slight right turn and joined our original course line to Van Nuys. I got quiet during this part of the leg because I admittedly wasn't feeling the best after all that turbulence. It was a lot of looking down at the chart to plan our new route around terrain and airspace and my head is feeling it. Best thing to do when you're feeling a little motion sick or nauseous is look out the window and hand fly the airplane yourself if possible. That couples your brain and vestibular system to your hands which then makes subconscious sense of the aircraft's movement. We admired the stunning beauty and the relentless congestion of Southern California from above as we cruised toward Burbank. And as we approached from the east, we listened to the current ATIS and prepared to descend into one of the busiest general aviation airports in the world, Van Nuys, California. You see Burbank up there, the airport, just above the, the kind of the left side of the mountain ridge, it's kind of crisscross runways. One of them's going like this, the other's perpendicular. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Burbank. See that highway that goes just the opposite side of Burbank, kind of diagonally? Follow it up, and then you'll see sort of like a light colored something jutting out way to the left. That's Van Nuys. Okay. Falcon 881 Alpha Delta is level at 1 1000 to join North the South runway. Alright, 881 Alpha Delta, so covers. Thank you, Burbank. Come from us, 321. That's pretty. Yeah, it is. November 9901, contact Burbank, Carl 1867. 118.7809901, good day. Yeah. One off Delta, contact the coverage 134.9. Burbank Tower, Skyhawk 80 at 9 or 1, 6200 descending, out or below 3000 inbound of Van Nuys. Skyhawk 80901, Burbank Tower, continue descent to out or below uh, 2000 as able, and westbound to Van Nuys approved. All right, westbound to Van Nuys approved, continue the descent out or below 2000, 809901. Yeah, Burbank DOP 6, downtown Glendale, uh, we're westbound 1500, proceed up to the 5170 for a loop, please. DOP 6, Burbank Tower, Burbank altimeter 3021, frog 0211, transition approved. Is there 211? All right, you are more. All right, we're trying to get off. Zomo navigation, do you have the freeway off your left and about a half a mile running east-westbound? Yeah, we got the freeway inside, 9091. So the 991 remain on the north side of that freeway westbound of Van Nuys, ready for service is terminated. Contact Van Nuys Tower 120.2. Alright, 20.2, stay to the north side of the east-west freeway over to Van Nuys, 991, good day. DWP 6, uh, radar contact, 1 mile east, 5134, interchange. Roger, DWP 6, thank you. Yeah, just we'll stay north, north of this highway here. Number two, phone citation, half mile final. Keep your speed up as much as possible. Volume number two, runway, tree four, left, stay to land. Van Nuys Tower, Skyhawk 80991 is approximately uh, five miles to the southeast inbound for a full stop. We have uniform. Skyhawk 80991, Van Nuys Tower, and a right base runway 34 right, clear to land. And a right base runway 34 right, clear to land, 80991. Okay, so we're going, zero in Lima. going for the turn little right runway. All right, we're strapped Just in. 7 in Lima, Break the pedal test. turn right cross. Okay. Lights on. Barrel minimum is not needed. Auto pilot. Limit traffic. Crew to the southeast inbound. Cessna number two. Follow number two. Where you want it? Right. Stay for the option. Yeah, I've been working it in. Okay. Car Pete. I've got it out. Fuel selector on both. Confirmed. Seven nine nine. Thank you. Flaps is required. And BRF. Cessna nine 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 one. Traffic ahead and to your left. One mile. One thousand six hundred indicator over the one hundred one. TBM. I'm looking for the traffic. Nine 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 one. They're right there. 
I've got the traffic in sight. 500. No, 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 one. Thank you. Traffic about a mile past them is the Cessna. They're inbound for the parallel. You are number one, sir. Wind tree, tree zero at one four. Runway three four right. Clear to land. Safe parking. Three four right. Clear to land. Number one going to Jet Aviation. TBM yep. seven off. Uh, Big Safe runway parking. is on yeah. the left. Ours is up and further. It's kind of that light colored strip there. Yeah, and it's short. Yeah. Castle Cooker, clear lazy, sir. Just a uh, correction, Cherokee, 75274, Vanessa. Number uh, 2 for VFR departure. Stand by. So it's zero limit traffic heading to right Cessna. Stay for the parallel. Traffic. So it's one caution, rotor wash. Roger. TBM 7 Alpha Hotel, traffic very short. Final turn left at nice. uh, Kilo. Ground will be 1 to 1.7 for Castle Cook today. This is nine nine one. Turn left. Uh, this taxiway right here. Foxtrot. Hold short. Runway right, three four left. All right. Turn left. Foxtrot. Hold short of three four left. Eight zero nine nine one. So we just got to squeeze between the lines here. Welcome to Van Nuys, one of the busiest general aviation airports in the world. If you haven't seen the film One Six Right by Brian Terwilliger, you should give it a watch. He produced that film when I was about 10 years old, and it played a huge role in inspiring me to combine my passions in filmmaking and flying. And it's all about this airport right here. We taxied to Jet Aviation on the northwest side of the airport, took a top off of fuel, and we borrowed the courtesy car to make the five minute drive to the neighboring bus terminal where we parked my SUV when we airlined out before Christmas. We have almost completed this three-day debacle to get all the way back to Santa Maria. So we're at Van Nuys now at the flyaway bus terminal. Just picked up my Nissan Xterra and Chelsea's gonna be driving. This thing has a rooftop tent on the top and it like barely clears these parking garages. I'm gonna go hop back in the plane. They gave me 20 gallons of fuel and I'm gonna go point it straight into the headwind yet again. Wind climb up and over the mountains and it's probably gonna be a really bumpy and 45 minute flight for me, uh, maybe close to an hour with the headwind. That's the plan. We're about to exit the parking garage here in Van Nuys I'll Airport. Down. I'll pick you up. Yeah, I'll, I'll go to Transient. And then we'll probably grab some groceries. Go to the go get groceries, maybe run to Chase and get some cash for our rent and all that kind of logistical stuff. She's gonna drop me back off at the crew car right here just outside the parking garage. And then I'm gonna head back over to Jet Aviation on the other side of Van Nuys and get 991 ready for my short solo leg across the mountains. It's a kind of a logistical nightmare, but we're nearing the end. A lot of logistics to juggle indeed, but that's all part of this mobile lifestyle. Leaving one vehicle, take an airline, move a plane, pick up the vehicle, move them both. But the adventures and memories are those which I wouldn't trade for anything. If you've made it this far into the video, I'd like to thank you for your patience on the continued release of this series of content. After we finished filming this stuff on the West Coast, we got incredibly busy, and I'm just now getting back to telling these stories for all of you, one flight at a time. I'm back to a regular editing routine, and so much has happened, and I have a lot of life stuff to update y'all on in due time. So thanks for your patience and commitment to seeing this channel and ongoing story through. Stay tuned. In the next episode, Chelsea begins the three-hour drive to our final destination with my SUV, and I hop back in the 172 to make that same trip in less than an hour. But not before waiting 27 minutes for a takeoff clearance, only to get up there and realize that there's something about this flight that I really do not like. All of that will be in the next video. Until then, you know the drill. I want you to stay happy, stay healthy, stay current, but most importantly, stay proficient. We'll see you in the next video right here in Van Nuys, California. Fly safe.